Radioonline.com, live from the Bill Austin Radio Studio. I'm Dominic Stern, joined by Ryan Blank Cole. Couldn't make it tonight. We all had a very busy weekend at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum covering Arizona State's loss in football to the USC Trojans. On, on an expected loss. Let's act like this one. Yes. Let's, let's make sure we are factual. Do you know what, Ryan? Good teams win. Great teams cover. Damn straight. Go Devs. Probably going to be a one in five. You'll be on the call this weekend. You can listen right here you know on what? blazeradioonline.com. You know what? It's not just because I want them to win, because uh, I'm a student and I'm calling it. They might upset them. I, I think they've got a good shot. If, if they, they play like they did in that first half. If they play like how they did all game, USC pounded them with pressure in the second half. Also, the tackling. Well, tackling was poor. Okay, the but you're going to be facing Michael Penix and not five star wide receivers. I don't know what Taj Washington was, but he's got to be like one of the best wide receiver threes in the country. It's not the Bolitnikoff winner, yeah. former five star recruit, or one of the best quarterbacks in the country. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I said Michael Penix. So I think the Devils will be fine. I think the Golden Sombrero Show officially is claiming Arizona State will upset Washington this week. Like, will be the call. Yes, I will. Be sure to turn on BlazeRadioOnline.com. Also, that's not the only upset that we will talk about because I have some upsets for the playoffs. All right. So the way the show is going to work, we're first going to talk about the NL East and how dramatic it was this weekend. I watched zero pitches of it. It really but wasn't that dramatic because yes. the Braves dominated. Well, the race has been dramatic. Oh, very dramatic. Uh, busy weekend. I didn't really get to watch, unfortunately. But saw the results. That's brutal. And then – after that, we'll talk about some of the teams that were able to punch their tickets in the playoffs, including the San Diego Padres and some of the other teams that have had really long playoff droughts, including the two longest droughts in each league coming to a close. Which teams are those? You'll have to wait and find out. Talk about Aaron Judge, still stuck at 61 home runs. He's got two more games to you're set. You're doing a great job teasing with everything. You're, doing, you're killing it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a good show host, Ryan. You are too. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. You're bringing the humor. Dom better. Uh, but, uh, and then lastly, we will give our predictions for what the division series look like when we come in here on Monday next, because the wild card weekend is this weekend, starting Friday, three game series at the top seeds home ballpark for all three games, potentially. And so of course, if the two teams split the first two games, so Ryan, let's first talk about the Atlanta Braves taking over control of the NL East. They did take over first place briefly earlier this month, or I believe just one day. Yeah, it was one day. But they entered the series down just one game, and the Mets came into town, and the Braves swept them. And after the Braves lost today and the Mets game got canceled, the Braves have a game-and-a-half lead over the New York Mets with two games to go for the Braves, three games to go for the Mets. And the Braves now have the tiebreaker. They needed to sweep to get the tiebreaker. They did. So the Braves control their own destiny. All they have to do is win one game or have the Mets lose one game. And their NL East champions will be the two seed in the National League. What are your thoughts? Braves with why they're the better team. They got to Scherzer. They got to DeGrom. They even had Bassett on the ropes. The three best pitchers for the Mets went this past weekend. And as a Mets fan, you had to feel confident that they would win at least one and maintain some control. No, they didn't. They struggled. Mainly DeGrom and Scherzer, they really struggled. So, for their standards, of course. But the Braves proved why they're one of the best in the league. They have, in my opinion, the second best offense in baseball. Only behind the Los Angeles Dodgers. Sorry, I, I know you don't like when I mention them, but. Yeah, I think that this Braves team is complete. They've got a very good trio of starters. When Spencer Strider is healthy, the bullpen got the, the moves and the upgrades they needed to have at the All-Star break. The bullpen's solid. It's deep. It has a lot of depth. And I think the offense is there. I think they're a complete team. And I think that's why they ended up winning, winning the division in the end when they win one of these next two games is because they are a more complete team than the Mets. The Mets' offense sold on them this entire yeah. second half. Whenever they needed big moments, it felt like they weren't always coming through. And this isn't a Mets fail. This was the uh, this was the Braves winning this division. They were 
500 through two months of the season, and they got to 100 wins. The Mets just have to win two of three to get to 100 wins, which they they very well could do this weekend and or this week. And if they do that, like it's really really hard to consider a 100 win season unsuccessful. It's kind of like in the, the Dodgers Rangers. last year with the Giants. Yeah, they won 106 games, yeah. it, and the Dodgers didn't necessarily. The Dodgers didn't let a 10 and a half game lead go away. Yeah. Like the Mets technically did. Yep. But no one is I mean, people are gonna clown the Mets because they're gonna clown the Mets. It's so fun. They're the Mets. It's fun. I don't really do it because I play for a team that's like just got clowned on, so like I can't really clown on the Mets. I could if I wanted to, but I'd feel kinda out of place doing so. But yeah, I think the people trust yourself. Yeah, I mean clown. sure. Padres beat the Mets four out of six times, starting uh all of those games were after the Braves began their upward trajectory. So I guess the Padres contributed to that. But they also took four to six from the Braves. And I, I was going into this uh, this weekend, the Padres currently having the five seed, more than likely going to face that four seed. I said, you know, I don't really care. I'm not going to wish for who the Padres want to play because then if they play them and then they lose, I'm going to be like, wow, Dom, thought you wanted, thought you wanted the Padres to play them. And I'd be like, well, you know, I was wrong. Just – let the cards fold as they may, and the Potters are currently beating the Giants one to nothing in the eighth inning. So they would be a game in front of Philly still. Uh, we'll talk about that whole situation. But do you still think the Mets can make a good playoff run despite more than likely being that number four seed, having to play in Wild Card Weekend? I think they're losing the DS. Whoever they face, Dodgers or Braves. Well, no, I mean, if you're the four seed and yeah. you move on, you face you're the Dodgers. You're facing the Dodgers, so. and I'm taking the Dodgers. Yeah, the, I think, to me, that's the worst part. Yeah. Because if you're facing the Padres or the Phillies, you're facing two pretty flawed teams. The Phillies don't have a very good bullpen. Uh, their starters have zero playoff appearances amongst all of them. I, I want I people to, to the, realize that. My worry with the Padres is the bullpen. And the offense. And I, the offense Padres have struggled. So. It's, my worry with the Padres is the offense. Uh, the the bullpen's been really good, so I I I get why you're saying that. They don't really have that. They don't have that solidified seventh and eighth inning guys. Luis Garcia has been really good of late. Garcia was really impressive so far. Yeah. So I think he's there, but in the end, when you're the Mets, I think the difference in that series is which offense is going to break through and whose depth is going to take over. And I think both favor the Dodgers, so that's why I think the Dodgers eventually will beat the Mets when it gets to that. If the Mets even get there. Because, to be honest, I think the Padres beat the Mets. I, I would feel confident with the Padres going to New York. I would feel confident with them going to St. Louis. I, I wouldn't feel too confident with them going to Atlanta. Or, obviously, I'm not going to feel confident with them going to Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, that, that goes without saying, considering the yeah. Padres' recent success, or lack thereof, Against the Los Angeles Dodgers, so like I said, I'm not I'm not going to pick or choose. I mean, I think that the Padres haven't played their best baseball yet, and if it happens this week, I think no matter who they're playing, Cardinals or Mets, I think if they play their best baseball, they're going to win a three game wild card series. I agree, and I think, and I mentioned something on my last show with Michael. Mm -hmm. Hear me out. Okay, I don't think it's going to happen, and I think it's crazy if you do it. What if Melvin decided to kind of concede game one and go and save the top two dogs for two and three? Which I know is stupid because you're on the road and you want to get that game one. But what if he did it in a parallel universe? Well, so. Starting Snell game one over Musgrove and Darvish. Well, Musgrove's going to start game three, first off. Um, and the way the rotation has lined itself up is Darvish is pitching game one, and they had him ready on regular rest to pitch game 162 if they needed him that day. And then Snell's going to follow him just because that's the way the rotation line. Musgrove pitched tonight, six scoreless innings, 10th pitcher in Padres history to get 10 wins, have a sub-30 ERA. And there is one other thing. But he's had a great season, and he's going to be the three-starter. So uh, that's just the way the rotation lines up. However, that pitching matchup between those two teams is a lot closer than a lot of people think. Uh, which teams? Uh, Mets and Padres. Oh, yeah. It's 100%. a lot closer than people think because people see the flashy names of Scherzer and DeGrom, but they've had times where they've really struggled. Also, 
Musgrove, like you said. Musgrove's had a great season. Yeah. Uh, and then Darvish, he has a good track record against the Mets, but also – He's been unbelievable he's been this year. Unbelievable. Like he, just won play, he just won pitcher of the month. He's been really good. Yeah, he's got a sub-3 ERA. And honestly, I think – Blake Snell's got a sub-3 ERA. In, in, in essence, I, I know that the, the rotation isn't going to fall that way, but it's kind of Bassett or Snell. Because you, you can trust oh. the top two dogs. Well, I mean, I, Snell's – I would say Snell is the Padres' second best pitcher. Really? Yes. Which over which one? Musgrove. Musgrove. Okay. Yeah, Darvish is one. Yeah. Darvish. Darvish has always been one. People. Uh, people have always asked me who who do I think is the ace. I, I've always gone Darvish. Uh, there are definitely times over the season where I would have taken Musgrove, but uh, I, I would take Snell. I, I I I like the way the Padres have lined up their rotation. I think it's been really nice how they have lined it up. And really good. I mean, I. Confident that the Braves can win the series. I'm not going to say they will because that's dumb. Uh, they'll also be underdogs in both series. But I mean, you look at it, uh, all those guys have pitched in the World Series before. And I mean, you can say the same thing about Scherzer and DeGrom and Wainwright. Those guys have been there. Like, these guys have pitched on the big stage. Musgrove has never started in the World Series, but he pitched in it. Yeah. So I, I, I feel confident with the Padres pitching staff going into the playoffs. The offense is 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 down bad right now. I mean, I don't really think there's any other yeah. way to put it. Uh, Machado's kind of in a slump after really, you know, accelerating his name was kind of being thrown around. Like, hey, he's a lot closer than, to Goldschmidt than people think he is. And then he's been awful. And it just happens. Like, uh, got the day off tonight. He needed it. Profar also got the day off. Uh, oh, JP, your favorite Padres, you said yesterday. No. Um, he needed it. Wait, hold on. I have a witness here. Dom's amazing girlfriend, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, did he indeed say that JP was his favorite Padre? He did indeed say that. I did? Yes, yes did. we have the receipts. Came. I have my witness. When what? you came up to that, you said, yeah, oh, let's it was, go JP, my favorite Padre. It was the bottom of the first inning. Oh, I said that sarcastically. But you said it. Oh, come on. No. No. I just got body back by my my great friend and my girlfriend. Oh, you can't say one of your best friends. Dang. I guess we're not that. I guess we're not close as I thought. Dang. I gave up my bed for you to sleep on the couch, and I drove you to the Padre game and then drove you five hours in a car that was a damn sauna to Arizona. I'm trying to shake your hand. I know, I know. I got to get to you. I don't know if my cord's going to let me reach. There we go. Handshake. You couldn't see it on YouTube. Thank you all for tuning in on YouTube and also on Blaze Radio Online. Or in Taylor Mall, shout out to all of you. Taylor Mall is yeah. underrated. That's where we get a lot of the beef of our listeners, just from them walking through. That's also where I love to sign stuff about voting. <coughs> Not. Stop loitering, people. Loitering is illegal. At least it should be. Well, it depends. Depends where. Anyways, not important. But thank you all for tuning in to the Golden Sabrero Show. Dominic Stern. Ryan Blank. Late night on the Golden Sabrero Show. You can tune in every Monday at 9 o'clock for the latest news in baseball. We kind of already talked about it. The Padres made the playoffs. I guess we'll start there and we'll talk about the two other teams that had broke the longest playoff droughts in each of their respective leagues uh, actively. So those are now over. But the Padres, we were there. It, It was really cool because the Padres made the playoffs in 2020, but it was in front of no fans for the first time since 2006. And the Padres hadn't clinched in San Diego since 2005. And it's a really cool video. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out on YouTube. I'm sure it's on there. Uh, From the Western Metal Supply Company at the top level, going across, they unveiled a banner that right next to the W, it read Western Division Champions. Obviously, didn't win the West. Didn't even come close, as a matter of fact. I wonder if the Royals are – there's no way – I have to do that research. I I don't think they are anymore. No, because the Royals fell to last. And the Guardians really pulled away. Yeah. Um, can we not talk about my team? Because then We're I not. Think it's We're not. But, I mean, it was always a funny point. It was really funny when you brought that the Royals are closer to first than the Padres are. And I said, Those were the days. I said, there's no way that's true. And I looked at it. And sure enough, the Royals, at some point in August, were closer than the Padres to it's first. okay. I have hopes that in two years, the Royals will be in this situation of clinching a playoff spot. Well, I, I have a tweet bookmarked of you saying that the Royals are going to be the 2024 World Series champs. And also on there it says it's a Nakash Nath tweet saying 
the Tigers will be 2023 World Series champs. So you have been warned, Twitter world, that if um, there's tweets. Can I, can I adjust that and say 2024 uh, postseason appearance? Because I think that's possible. Uh, I mean, if they make the playoffs, I'm not going to, like, go and, like, try and ratio you. Just wait. Just wait till they just get and, You know, if – right. If they if they make the playoffs in 2024, I will be happy for you. And I'm not going to ratio you if they get eliminated from the playoffs. Like, that that would be very low of me. You understand that, right? Yeah. So. It's also very low of you from when you jinxed my Chris Bubich no hitter. Yeah. All right, dude. You, you weren't there. Have I seen a no hitter in my team's lifetime? Yes. When John Lester no hit the Royals when he was with the Red Sox. Yeah. You saw one. I you did get to see one. On TV. See it me. was on TV. People were texting me, and I said, all right, you know, that's fine. You're not jinxing anything. But when you're there, it's different. That's all I'll say. I don't care. I, I say it to have fun. But other people, you can't say that to me. Because I, I know you're saying it to jinx it. I went for revenge that night. I just pointed out. Was it uh, – we were talking about – oh, no, it was Brooklyn on Friday night when we were at the game. We are like, oh, Blake Snell's got a no-hitter. And then the next batter – let off the inning and got a base hit. And we're like, ah, oh, that's why we don't do that. That's right. Uh, so the Padres, they made the playoffs. Let's go back to that. And it was cool because I, along with many other Padres fans that were at the game, were tracking the result of the Brewers and Marlins game. And the Marlins were up 2 nothing. The Brewers lost, the Padres made the playoffs. And the Marlins blew a 2 nothing lead going into the eighth inning. One run in the eighth, one run in the ninth. And then an extra is the first inning. The Marlins score just one run, and the Brewers followed up with another run. And then uh, the following inning, the same thing happened. And then in the 12th inning, uh, it was 0 0. Like, neither side scored. And then the 13th, the Marlins scored. And then the Brewers were able to hold on. I was watching it on the game day thing. If you've ever watched on game day, it shows the pitches. And then it shows a blue pitch if the ball is put in play. And then it either says in play outs in play no out or play one and all of them have a parentheses s next to it basically saying like oh like it, it could be one it could be none but when there's two strikes and two outs in that last half inning i got the tweets from a couple beat reporters and i was trying to like swipe it up so that i could see uh you know the final the final pitch but then by that point like some people had already started uh standing up and clapping i knew what they're clapping for so i i joined them it was really cool, and then Josh Bell stepped out because it was weird. And I don't think he really realized. He didn't realize it at first. I don't think like, he realized, no and then it hit him that okay, the Padres just we we just clinched a playoff spot. And then Lance Lynn stepped off. You know, he's a veteran; he's been there before. So it was a really cool moment. And then uh, Josh Bell struck out because of what he's been doing uh, ever since he put on a Padres uniform. It's been a rough go for him. Uh, hopefully, he can uh, find something over the next two games. The Padres have to keep playing him uh, because. I, I think he's going to be a vital part if the Potters can make a playoff run. Uh, Jake Cronin just hit a home run, by the way. Welcome to the Grand Zone! The Grand Zone! Um, and then uh, Ha Sung Kim, the next batter, hit a home run, and the stadium was going nuts. And then we were trying to give Ha Sung Kim a current call, but then Austin Nola grounded out on the first pitch. And everyone was kind of like, ah, oh, that kind of sucks. It's but then, Nola. Yeah, right. It's, it is Austin Nola. And then in between innings, or well, in between that inning, Immediately, PA addresser uh, Alex Miniak uh, went on the mic and announced the Potters made the playoffs. And there's big things on uh, on all the jumbotrons, and it was really cool. Everyone was clapping. First time that the Potters had done that uh, in their hometown uh, in front of fans in 17 years. So it had been a long time coming. It was really cool. Like it, like we talked about. I I don't know if this team can make a playoff run. I think they can win a series, but this offense has been absolutely horrific especially when you look at these really, really good pitching staffs that some of these teams have, I'm not sure they can do it. However, there are teams that have, in my opinion, pitching staffs that the Padres can hit and also offenses that aren't that good. The Braves and the Dodgers aren't those teams, but I think the Cardinals and the Mets are two of those teams, can't play the Phillies. So, um, I, you know, the Padres made it. I was there. We were there. The two of us were there. It was really cool. Ryan, you got to see it. Brooklyn, you got to see it as well. Uh, it was really, really cool. I was very happy. Yeah, it was cool. You know, and being at Petco for the first time. With a beer bat in hand. The beer bat in hand. 
Oh, that was a great time. And then seeing the happiness on your face. I saw your eyes got a little teary for a second. Yeah. I saw it. But, man, I'm happy that I was able to experience that with you. Yeah, That's it was, awesome. It was really cool. Uh, I, I hope you can uh, see the Royals make it back to the playoffs soon. Uh, you hear that, God? Please help me out. I'll do whatever. <laughs> Anything? Would be uh, with limits, but uh, with limits. There you have it. Uh, not much that would keep me from doing it. Not much. Uh, Petco Park, Ryan. Best stadium in baseball? Yes or no? Kaufman better. You told me yesterday. <laughs> you told me yesterday that this no, is better um, than Kaufman. Petco is the best park I've been to by far, and I think it's the best in baseball. You showed me two views that so that sealed the deal, and I think it was the one in the outfield where you can just get a beautiful view of home plate from where Tony Gwynn's statue is, and then also the one up top where you just get the entire downtown skyline. Absolutely gorgeous. Not to mention the view about 30 seconds away from at the top yeah. uh, looking at the skyline that you can get of the harbor, and you can see yeah. a couple of. Uh, I think that's an underrated view that you showed me. Yeah, no, I you got you, you, the best tour of Petco Park is given out by Dominic Stern. I'll leave it at that. Brooklyn, I think you want to say something. I leave a I leave a five star review for the tour for sure. Um, how would you describe the tri tip nachos? That was the best tri tip I've ever had in my life. There you go, card of crack. It hit so good. Yeah, it, it indeed hit. Indeed. Yeah, both Brooklyn and Ryan were able to try. The tri-tip nachos this weekend. Uh, that was the top thing that's uh, recommended by people uh, visiting Petco Park. Elite. Uh, yes, they they both enjoyed it. I, I stuck to the big slugger dog, which garnered a lot of attention towards me. But let me tell you, the big slugger dog is one impressive weenie, and I love that weenie, and it tasted delicious. Ah, someone likes big weenies. I I I love me a good wiener. Congrats to the Mariners and to the Phillies <laughs> on making the 2022 <laughs> postseason. You, you hear that, Brooklyn? Your boyfriend loves a good wiener. Thank you, Ryan. Oh. <laughs> All right. He's got body back by her again. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Let's get back to baseball. I love a good hot dog. We'll leave it at that. Uh, the Phillies, as of today, clinched the playoff spot. Yes, sir. Uh, they currently have – a two-game lead over the Brewers at two games to go, and they hold the tiebreaker. So they will get that spot. They can jump over the Padres. It seems like the Padres are going to hold on. Noel looked really impressive tonight. Yeah, he did. Looked really good. Uh, I mean, he's he's always been really good. Yeah. Um, oh, cool. It's now 7 nothing. Wow, they scored seven runs in the eighth. Go Pods. Uh, go so, Pods. So the Padres have a one-game lead over the Phillies, and the Phillies – have the tiebreaker. So if those two teams end the regular season tied, the Phillies are going to be the five seed, and they will go to play whoever ends up not winning the NL East, presumably the Mets, and the other team will go face the St. Louis Cardinals. I have a question. The three seed, yes. Who would you rather face? Who would I rather face? I would rather face the Cardinals, but simply for the fact that if you win that series, you then turn around and face the Braves instead of the Dodgers. Okay. That's, that's my that's reason. That's why I thought you would say – just because of how it lines up afterwards. So, yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought you would say. But at the end of the day, I would also like to see the Padres win a series. I'm not sure which team I'd rather have the Padres face because the Cardinals present a little bit of different challenges than the Mets. Uh, the Mets, obviously, have the Grom and Scherzer, which are far better pitchers yeah. than anyone the Cardinals have. No disrespect yeah. to Flaherty, to you know. Montgomery, Wainwright. I. Uh, feed me Adam Wainwright. That's all. all you all, know, all the Padres face Adam Wainwright. You know, being from Kansas City, I am not a huge Cardinals fan, but they have had some of my favorite players in the league on their teams: Arenado, Goldschmidt, Pujols, Wainwright. I want them to make a run. I do, just because of the sentimental value of it all. It's been a minute since the Cardinals have made a postseason run, and that's a little bit scary. Because the Padres have some playoff history with the Cardinals, and it's not good. Oh, really? Could you do you want to dive into that? Sure. 1996 lost to them. 2005 lost to them. 2006 lost to them. But beat them in 2020. There were no fans, and all the games were played at Petco because that's the way the series went that year. Uh, but before 2020, the only team in the National League that the Padres had lost to in the playoffs was the Cardinals. 
got to the World Series in 84, got to the World Series in 98, all other three times had lost to the Cardinals. So they got over that, and then they got pummeled by the Dodgers. Uh, lost by five, lost by one, a heartbreaker. And then I forget how much they lost by. It was it was a little. Yeah, they won the World Series. But I, I'm not sure the Padres can get over the Cardinals' voodoo magic that is probably with them this year in what is likely the last year of Adam Wainwright, uh, we Yadier Molina, sure and Albert Pujols. Do you think Wainwright retires? I'm not sure. I think Wainwright might go out with them, especially depending on how they do. Wainwright is going to be one of the top national analysts in all of baseball when he's done, just because every time the Cardinals get eliminated from the playoffs, he does analyst work right after because yeah. he's that good. Um, but also, I'm not they sure. Also, had a mic up before a game on ESPN on Sunday Night Baseball. Just hearing his rhythm, his technique, and his routine that he goes through, it's ridiculous. But like at the same time, he hasn't pitched to anyone not named Yachty. That's the thing. In, I, I can't even, like, they, they have the longest uh, active, or they have the longest streak in Major League Baseball. 325 career starts. Yeah. Right, and, like, I don't, I can't, like. That is one long-lasting battery. Let yeah. just say so. So, I, it's been a long time. He would have to develop a whole new relationship. And, I'm, and I don't think is, he wants to do that. Right. I'm Especially not sure Especially where he's at in his career. Yeah, he might just say, you know what, I've had a great career. Won two World Series titles, was a massive part in both of them. Was the closer in 2006 and as one of their best starters in 2011. Yeah, 2011. Because the Giants beat the Rangers in 2010 and then beat and the Rangers lost in 2011 again, which was to the Cardinals. So we will see you tomorrow night. Right. But so the Phillies, they made it to the playoffs. You mentioned uh, Nola. Pitching really well. This team's not playing good baseball right now. I really don't think there's any other way around it. Yeah, but their offense is still so weak. Yeah, the offense has the potential. Their starting rotation has turned out to be pretty solid. They have a solid three. Yeah, they have a really solid top two, and then they can go Suarez in game three or Gibson, and both guys, you can say, all right, we can go win this game. You're not going to say we have the better starter in this game, but they can get us a win. Yes, they can give us five innings and hopefully less than two runs, and you can turn the ball over to your bullpen, which has some it's good very, arms. Sh- it's shaky, but they still have some value. Has runs. some good arms. Alvarado, Dominguez, Robertson. Uh, think of anyone else. It's weird just because you remember uh, last time. Oh, I forgot about Knable. Knable's a good arm there. So they have, they have, they have the arms. arms to where you can, if you can get through five, you can get your way through. And we saw with the Nationals, you don't need a deep bullpen. You need four guys that you can count on every night and when you're losing, you just throw out the other guys and just say, all right, we may not win this game. We're going to throw you out there. If you do well, good for you. Do you know what that reminds me of? What? Royals in 2015. Yeah, I mean, they had you know, entire bullpen was good, but you have to think about it this way. It went Hoshaver or Ryan Madsen, then HDH. That's all you need. Yeah. If you can trust those guys consistently, then when you're losing, you throw out the other guys, you're set. And I think that's kind of the way you look at it if you're the Phillies. They have those four, five arms that they can consistently trust. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the Phillies can make a run. I don't think they will. But uh, they are in the same situation as the Padres. Either looking at going towards St. Louis. If they can do well, they can maybe move up to that five spot. Yeah. So, we will see. But they, they haven't been playing the best baseball. So, I, I think the standings stay where they're at. Yeah. And then moving over to the American League, congratulations to the Seattle Mariners for ending North America's longest active playoff drought. Hadn't made it since 2001. The way they did it was so electric. Walk-off home run. They've been a team that's kind of relied on some really magical wins. I don't want to say games that they shouldn't have won, but comebacks, walk-off wins, taking the lead in the top half of innings when they're on the road. So the Mariners, they made it. They did it. Do you think they can make it? I mean, they they have it's so tough. They have a lineup that at times can be good, and they have a rotation that I think can really cause some damage. They're going to be going against the Blue Jays, and I just think the Blue Jays have the upper hand. I I want them to win. I like Seattle a lot, just because they're a fun team to watch. They remind me of the Padres because both teams were just fun to watch. But I just think in the end, it's going to be the Blue Jays. Is that locked up? It's um. 
I don't think it is. I think the only way that it changes is that. Yeah, Toronto's going to host. Yeah, I think the only way that changes is if the Mariners lose each of their last three games. And last I saw, they were winning tonight. Uh, they're losing right now. They are losing. Mm-hmm. But if it stays that way, I do think that Toronto beats them. Yeah, that would be tough team that has primarily excelled uh, playing in front of their home crowd. Yeah. Toronto playoff crowds are insane because the Rogers Center sits about 50,000 people, yeah. and they don't get that during the regular season because, one, well, Remember the hotel that's embedded in there, too? Remember at the stadium? Yeah, but yeah. what about it? People fill that thing up. Oh, they do? Oh, yeah. I've never noticed that. Oh, it's, it's so cool. Um, just because I remember this from when the Royals had their playoff games against them, is that they sell the, they'll sell those rooms out for nights, and fans will buy them at crazy prices and just sit there and watch the game. Well, even if they didn't sell the hotel. Oh, it'd still be crazy. They, that stadium seats 50,000 people. Yeah. It's not a baseball town, but when you have a playoff game, you're going to get the sports fans who are more interested in the Maple Leafs and the Raptors to come around, especially – right before hockey and basketball season yeah. gets started. It's a sports town. It's not a baseball town. Baseball's not a huge sport in Canada. There definitely are people that like baseball in Canada, not saying that there aren't. But, but when the playoffs come around, Toronto has one of the best atmospheres. Relatively, they're just not a baseball town. But one more to Bautista. There's a drive. On the no doubt about it. I hate them. Why do you hate them? Stop it, Bautista. Oh, dude, that's one of that's one of like my favorite playoff moments. Oh, it's an electric playoff moment, one hundred percent. And I love the moment. I just don't like the man. All right, that's fine. Well, you know what's funny? You know where Bounty started his career, right? Uh, was it Pittsburgh? Kansas was, City. was it Kansas City? Yeah. Was that as a minor leaguer, or was that where he made his debut? Yeah, he, he did make his debut. Huh? I didn't know that. I know that he like made his way well around before he settled in Toronto. But did not know that. Joey Bats, also known as Joey Bats Flip, because he's got probably the most famous bat. Most flip. iconic bat flip. 100%. Anyways, also congratulations to the Blue Jays. They clinched playoff berth, but they've been there. They've done that. I and, think it's impressive what they did, especially with an interim manager. Yeah. and Especially how their season started, too. They turned it around, and once they got going, they played really well. And their pitching staff has really, really faltered for them. But – they're, they're kind of in it a spot where duo. they've figured out who they can go to in those right spots. And They've got a really good duo. When you need a big game from Manila, he'll show up. Yeah. Gosman's been good. Only if Barrios had been pitching well this year. He's really struggled all year long. Yeah, if Barrios or Ryu yeah. can figure it out, those two guys. Is, it, have, is Ryu still in the I.L.? I'm not sure. I, I might just be speaking, uh, really? speaking uninformed here, uh, but – I mean, let's pretend Ryu's healthy. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's a good four. Ryu's your fourth. He's going to pitch you one game in the playoffs. You're fine with that. So, I mean, I I think the Blue Jays got a good shot. Unfortunately, if they win, they're going to go out and face Houston. And Houston is far and away the most complete team in the AL. Uh, The Yankees are going to be the two seed. Cleveland's going to be the three and then it's all about whether or not Seattle and Tampa Bay can uh, can swap spots. Seattle's currently got the five. Tampa Bay's got the fourth. Congratulations to the Rays on making the playoffs. Once again, what is that, four straight years for them after winning 90 games in 2018 and barely missing? Yes, I believe so. That's consistency right there. Um, Ryu's done for the year. Oh, yes, okay. So uh, I don't know who their fourth yeah, is. Yeah, he had a UCL injury. And, he and injury. You, you say Kikuchi's been awful for I knew when they signed him that was going to be a terrible deal. Well, he wasn't like ever really that good for Seattle. Yeah. He was an all star last 10, year. But... 10 plus mil. What? Doesn't make sense to me. They He's knew that they good. needed pitching and they were willing to throw money at pitchers. So, no. you know, you respect an organization for trying to win. Sometimes you make moves that aren't in their best interest. So, those are the teams that have made the playoffs. All the spots, all the teams are full. It's yes. just whether or not. How it shakes out. Yeah. Who faces who? The f- the five and the six are up for grabs in both leagues. Yep. And then the four and the two in the NL, depending on how the NL East wraps up, we'll probably know who it is tomorrow unless the Mets unless the Mets sweep their doubleheader and the Braves lose again to the Marlins. 
And I mean, if you're the Mets, you kind of hope that it gets wrapped up tomorrow. Yes, 100%. Or, or you have a shot and you win it yeah. on Wednesday. Because if you're the Mets, you should absolutely go all out on Wednesday if you can get it. Because if you get the first round by, all of a sudden, you don't have to play on Friday and then Saturday. And you also avoid the Dodgers if you do win that series. Mm-hmm. Well, you, you avoid the Dodgers until the NLCS yeah. if you win that division. So, Which is key. At stake. However, it, worst case scenario for the Mets. They sweep their doubleheader tomorrow. The Braves win, or the Braves lose Tuesday. Yes. And then either the Mets lose Wednesday or the Braves win Wednesday. And the Mets go and try and win that game to try and win the division. Because then all of a sudden they're going to have to turn around their pitching staff's not going to be like all that rested. Yeah, they might call up guys and you know still play their play their full guys and still get an off day on Thursday while the Padres have to fly across or maybe the Phillies end up facing them. But still have an off day, but yeah. you can really rest everyone and say, "All right, guys, take a breather. Let's focus on the wild card. Let's get ready for the wild card." And I think exactly that it does get wrapped up tomorrow, one way or another. It does get wrapped up. Yeah, okay. there would have to be three outcomes. There is a 12.5% chance if you go based on true win outcome probability. Um, you know. Quick math right there, Dom. Thank you. One eighth, 12.5. Anyways. And people say journalists aren't good at math. I mean, that's just basic fractions and division. Hey, but think, give yourself some credit. Thank you. All right. Uh, one more final thing before we go with our, our playoff predictions. For uh for just the wild card round, I don't think I'm ready to make my World Series prediction, uh based on not knowing who's going where exactly. But Aaron Judge tied the American League home run record, also the Yankees home run record. Yes. Tying Roger Maris's sixty one home runs with his sixty first home run this weekend. Pretty cool moment. Uh I didn't think either play by play call on the Yankees side was all that good, but talk too much. Yeah, I think you know when, as both of us were play by play, we love doing baseball. That's our thing. You have to let the crowd speak for itself and the reaction speak for itself because that's what kind of gives fans goosebumps as well. Well, and Sterling's a fossil, so yeah. like he hasn't been good for quite some time now. But Michael Kay, who I I think is one of the best broadcasters, he he went over he went overboard, uh, and I think he sunk a little bit. He didn't say judge. He didn't say the word judge or Aaron Judge or Aaron uh, at any point after the ball was hit. He said, uh, there it is, 61. He has done it. He wanted to make history. Yeah. He has joined Maris at 61 as he rounds the bases. And, like, you know, he's kind of got laid out. Anyways, not important. The judge still stuck at 61. He now has two more games against the Texas Rangers. To get home run number 62. Ryan, do you think he's going to get it? I want him to. I want him to get the triple crown. I do. Because I want him to really shield the MVP for the people like you saying Otani. So I really want him to seal it. Also, I love history. So give me some history. Also, history. Shout out Pujols today for passing Babe Ruth for the second most RBIs all time. Right. He had another home run today. So good for him. But I want. Judge him, and I think he will. I think it's just today he did get intentionally watched, watch, watch, which is crazy. I think it's at the point, you know what? Throw fastballs, challenge him. If you get the best of me, you hit my best pitch. If not, well, I'm going in the record book for one for one reason. Well, I don't think they had thrown fastballs, but, but I mean, pitch to him. Yeah. If you're the Rangers who aren't going to make the playoffs, what what good are you doing by intentionally walking? Someone who's trying to chase history, something that hasn't happened in the American League ever, yeah. and only three players have ever done in Major League Baseball history, all of which have been heavily tied to or have been suspended. I don't think any of them were suspended. Uh, steroid, steroid users, let's just go there. But Judge has fallen behind Luis Arise for batting average in the American League. Judge batting 311, Arise batting 315. Arise has led. Ah! I don't want Arise to win it. Arise has led this category for much of the season. A lot, yeah. And then Bogarts is flirting with yeah. it as well. Bogarts for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, he's really cool off. Probably on the 305, which is still really good. But 
Judge passed a rise for a couple of weeks this past month, and then a rise just jumped in front of him. So it's going to take Judge a couple of hits and a rise to not have a good last two games to stay in front of Judge. I mean, he, he's chasing history. It would be really cool if that ends up happening. I'm not sure it's going to, but uh, really hoping for it. But I'm um, Shohei Otani. So I know he bid into the eighth, I believe. Yeah. And did he also hit a home run in that game? I mean, some Otani? of the yeah. I don't think he did. These, he did. these two players are having two seasons the Amer- the American League has never yeah. seen before, with the exception of what Shohei Otani did last year. Uh, it sucks that neither one of them is going to win MVP. Both of them would probably be unanimous if they were in the National League, but yeah. that's just the way it works. Uh, luckily for both of them, they're not going to be going to arbitration because Aaron Judge will be a free agent and Shohei Otani signed a one-year $30 million deal to avoid arbitration. So I think that'll be cool. Judge, uh, I really hope he gets it. I'm not sure he's going to because Texas is a really hard ballpark uh, to hit a home run. So we will see. You okay? No. Look what I just, I'm going to show everyone on YouTube what I just saw on my phone. Does that say longest longest playoff droughts? The Royals are third since 2016. No, second since 2015. Oh, 15. Yeah. 15 was last time they made it. So they're only behind the Angels and the Tigers. Yeah. At least you don't have the longest playoff drought in your division. High five. Just a little high five. Well, That's the most depressing I've ever given in my life. Well, it's okay. So. Royals have won a World Series in your lifetime. Yes, yes. And you have to see it. You no. have to be at some of those games. How many was it? Just the wild card. Twenty fourteen, I was at the wild card. Twenty fifteen, oh, right. I was at ALCS game one. There you go. Was I on? No, no. I I begged, I pleaded to go to World Series game one. I begged. My parents were like, no. It's a lot of money. I told them they could take money out of my savings. Mm. I was like, hey, I have bar mitzvah money. This might be a good reason to use it. And they said, absolutely not. I was like, I tried. Yeah, money. At the end of the day. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I could see my favorite athlete ever hit the game time over. Oh, Gordon? Okay. Sorry, I was uh, I was thinking back to the 2014 World Series. I'm like, who had a game time home run? Anymore? But then I'm like, ah, right. 2015, game one. Drew is familiar. Alex Gordon took a beat. The Mets blew that World Series so hard. You know, here's the thing. Well, that's not me discrediting the Royals. They, did it. they battled. The they battled. The Royals that entire year, the theme was comeback. You saw what they did against the Astros. So I don't think they blew it. Don't, don't say that. The Mets were winning in four of the five games in the seventh inning. You know what? I was confident that the Royals would come back in each and, each and every game. Because of what they had done that entire year. Yeah, I mean, I can't really call it blind confidence because they had done it, but it was not blind confidence at all. I never said it was. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so let's break down the wild card weekend. I can give you my predictions right now. Yeah, let's just pretend that how it is right now at this moment, considering the Padres yes. have won and that the Mariners are still in front of the Rays, is how it's going to align. Yes. So let's start in the AL. You are going to have the Tampa Bay Rays. Traveling to Cleveland to face the Guardians. Tampa Bay. You have Tampa Bay. Yes, and let me explain why. Okay. I think Cleveland is just really young. But also, Tampa Bay got somebody very important back. And Tyler Glass now. I know he's not going to be able to pitch a lot, but still getting that arm back is massive. And they have the playoff experience. I think that when you look at it, it's Franco and playoff Randy against Jose Ramirez. And I value the other two. The two of the one. So, I think... This series is going to be very scrappy, a very tight series, but I am going to take Tampa Bay. I'm going to take Cleveland in that series. I think that they have the recipe to really counter what uh, Tampa Bay has. They rely on strikeouts. They rely a little bit too much on hitting home runs. And the Guardians pitching staff has really been an anchor for this team all year long. I think they'll be able to pull it out in front of a home crowd, and you're not going to see too many Rays fans in Cleveland. It's going to be primarily a Cleveland crowd, which normally they don't have. They sing the Astros, who travel really well, have a yeah. massive fan base in that Houston market. The Yankees, who travel obnoxiously well because yep. they're the Yankees. And also facing the Cubs. I'm trying to think who else they played. The Blue Jays right there. Tampa yeah. Bay. 
I, I think that's a good matchup for Cleveland. I think they can win that series. And Austin Hedges and a bunch of other former Padres. Oh, the Rays also have a couple. I uh, do not like Austin Hedges. You broke up that no hitter to Bubich, right? Nope. Nope, he broke up the singer no hitter. Ah, a bunch earlier in the game. Nope, eighth inning. Ah. It was actually deeper in the game than Bubich. Wow. Oh, no. And of all people. Austin Hedgehog Hedges. Hitting below the Mendoza line. Not even close to the Mendoza line. Not even close. And you know what? It was a bloop single. Well, I mean, it was it's either a bloop single or a home run directly to left center field. Like, well, if home you, runs break up no hitters. That's what happened, right? The hitting after you texting me. Ryan, Austin Hedges has 66 career months. I would guarantee you that 40 of them have been within a probably 50 feet net. Like, you took a net and, like, you put it all the way up. Oh, I agree. They are they go into that net. Like, yeah. his swing is tailored towards hitting right there. Yeah. What do you think Austin Hedges' career batting average is? 216. 216. Very generous of you. Lower? Yes. 198. Still a little generous. 183. No, too, too, uh, too harsh. Right in the middle, 190. Yes, 190. Oh, my God. Good job, Ryan. <laughs> Does 190. he bring a little bit of value defensively? A little. He brings a ton of value defensively. Well, I'm talking about in the grand scheme of things, a little value. Yeah. Now, defense is in value the same. Last four major league seasons, 176, 145, 178, 166. He's a bad hitter. He's a terrible no hitter. Way, he's no elite way around it. Yes. He's elite defensive. I will give him credit there. Uh, man. Yeah, he was great until he changed his lockup song. Careless Whisperer. It was epic. Anyways, other American League series, as it stands right now, Seattle Mariners coming to face the Toronto Blue Jays. Who do you got? I do, too. I just I'm that- taking shock, but whatever. Like you said, a lot of close wins, especially from their home crowd. The Toronto atmosphere plus Toronto has more playoff experience. And in the end, I think that I'm going to trust that offense more than Seattle. So I'm going to take Toronto. And then flipping it over to the National League side of it, let's start with the other one. These two are more likely to change. Yeah. Phillies at Cardinals. 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 I'm not sure where I'd lean with this one. And here's the thing. I think it's tough because both offenses can put up a lot of runs, but at the same time, the pitching does favor Philadelphia. I, It's just the St. Louis crowds, that atmosphere, it's electric. And I think that in the end, just that Cinderella story kind of atmosphere, kind of feel, I think we'll push them and I think they'll Phillies. And the problem for the Phillies is they have a lot of players who don't exactly have a ton of playoff experience exactly. because that, that team, all their homegrown guys have never been there. Yeah. And then they have a couple of other guys who they've acquired who haven't been there, uh, such as JT Guramuto, yeah. Zach Wheeler did not pitch in the 2016 playoff run. 2015, excuse me. I keep doing that. Uh, and then he didn't pitch in the 2016 and a wild card game. Uh, and then they have a couple other guys. Schwarber, Kind of the exception. He's kind of experience. Yeah. But when you look at you look at their lineup, Bryce Harper hasn't been there since 2017. Uh, obviously, really, really good player. He's won two MVPs. I don't think you're concerned about him there. But Reese Hoskins, JT Real Muto, like I mentioned, Alec Bohm, a lot of their other young guys, they don't have playoff experience. So I, I'm, I'm going to lead towards the Cardinals. I agree. I think that's the closest of the three we've mentioned thus far. Yeah. But – I, I think that the Phillies absolutely can win a playoff series, whether it's in New York, it's in Atlanta, somehow, and they can win it. Uh, and they also can win it against the Mets. Yep. And so then last but not least, we're going to talk about the final one. Once again, as it aligns, not guaranteed to happen. It's crazy the amount of Mets fans that have reached out to me saying, ah, may the best team win. And I'm like, oh, like, there is a very legit possibility that the Padres end up in St. Louis. Very realistic. Just takes one loss. Uh, if the Padres go one and one, and the Phillies win the next two, then 
the Phillies go to New York or to the NL East winner, NL East loser, excuse me, and then the Padres go to St. Louis. Yep. Or if the Padres lose both their next two games and the Phillies just win one, they, of course, have the much tougher opponent. Yeah. But neither of those two teams have anything to play for, actually, because the Astros have already cleaned out one seed. So uh, Padres versus Mets. I mean, I think you kind of made it clear. I think the won. Padres win this series. I want them to win, but I also just think 2006, Dom. It's been 16 years. Mm -hmm. That edge is there. And I think that when you look well, at 2020 pitching, happened, like it, it did happen. But, but it's, it's going to be different because fans are going to be yes. there. And here's the thing I think the pitching is being underrated on the Padres. People are like, oh, the Gromishers are sober. Not so fast. Darvish. I'll take Snell, Darvish and Snell and, and Musgrove. Musgrove lined up against their yeah. three. Like, I would the, too. Padres, the Mets, like, if you made me pick which rotation I'd rather have, I'm going to pick the Mets. Yes. That's obvious. Yes. But you said it earlier, the gap is a lot smaller than people realize. Yes, it is. You, Darvish, has been unbelievable in the postseason, with the exception of when he faced the Houston Astros, who were cheating. Yeah. Well, for a lot of people, but. Musgrove, like you mentioned earlier, a great year. And Snell's been pitching really well. And here's my other reason. Which offense do I think will break through in the tough moments? Padres. Let's look, look at who they have. Soto and Machado. One of the, those who is going to break out. I know that's going to happen. It wouldn't shock me if both of them did. So it's a gut feeling type of thing. And it's not just because I want the Padres to win. I really think they're going to win this series. Yeah, Machado, if it happens, yeah. Machado really pulled through when the Padres needed him in that 2020 playoffs. Yeah. Uh, Soto was obviously incredible in the 2019 playoffs. The Mets don't really have any of those guys. They don't. Eduardo Escobar only played in the playoffs uh, last year yeah. and didn't do anything for the Brewers, whose offense was just absolutely awful against the Braves. The A's that have gone over there, Mark Hanna, Starling Marte, they haven't done anything in the playoffs. Uh, Francisco Lindor, you know, he, he did some things for the, yeah. the Cleveland. Uh, the then but, Cleveland Indians. Yes, that's what I was yeah. trying to avoid saying, but yes. Uh, so they have guys, uh, but a lot of playoff lacking experience. The Padres, a lot of their lineup has been there. Yeah. Uh, guys like Brandon Drury have not. And this is including the 2020 playoffs, which is definitely different. Uh, Otherwise, Myers doesn't have any playoff experience. Like um, it counts the essence of having that playoff experience, but in the end, just it's way different when there's that fan atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And I think that you know we didn't really talk about it. I think the crowds at both City and at Bush are going to be just as loud. Yeah. Like those two teams are going to bring forty thousand plus of their fans. You won't see that strong of a Padres following it either because there's not a lot of Padres fans dispersed in either of those two cities because they're far away. And also, it's far away to travel. So, um, expensive flights, especially because you don't know which place they're going to yeah. go yet, so you can't book that flight so far, like at least a couple days in advance before airline companies really kill you. So, uh, I, it'll be fun. And I think that the, the Padres have a shot. I don't know. I hate predicting them to do things, especially after I predicted that they would win the World Series last year. Uh, but, I mean, I, I feel confident with them going to New York. They have hit Scherzer really, really well in the past couple of years, except for when he's wearing a Dodgers uniform. It has been awful. Uh, you know. Yeah. Um, it, but they, like you mentioned, they had success against the Mets this year, too. Yeah, beat them four or six times. I don't really take that that much into consideration. And then... On the other side of the bill, the Padres uh, only took two out of six against the San Luis Cardinals. Really had a shot at uh, winning that last one before a grand slam kind of sunk them against uh, Adrian Marajone and Nick Martinez. So I, I feel confident. I, I like the way the bullpen uh, has been pitching lately. Starting rotation, at least the top three guys, I'm very confident in. In the lineup, they, they haven't clicked at all this year. And the hope is that after an off day and, you know, Totally selling out and preparing for those pitchers, they can get it done. 
But that's going to wrap up this episode of the Golden Sombrero Show. Thank you all for tuning in. Cole Bradley should be back with us next week to break down the Wild Card Weekend and look ahead to the Division Series matchups for the Major League Great Baseball job. playoffs. We're not back here next week. We don't have to be. It's oh, that's right. It's fall break. Uh, we probably won't have a show then. So uh, thank you all for tuning in. You can catch Ryan and I on the 4-3 show on Wednesday at 7 o'clock. BlazeRadioOnline.com live from the Boston Radio Studio. This has been the Golden Sombrero Show.